The topic of this lecture is semaphore. Semaphore is an object with an integer value. There are two functions for a semaphore. There's semweight and there is another one is sempost. So um, then there is another function, of course, the semaphore and the in it. Um, it has three parameters. The first one is the address of the semaphore variable. And then second one is whether the semaphore is shared among the threads or not. And third one is initial value of the semaphore. It works as follows. Semaphore weights accepts an address to the semaphore and it decrements the value of the semaphore s by one and it weights if the value of the semaphore becomes negative. So if the value of the semaphore has been one or higher when called sem weight, then the caller uh, returns immediately. Um, if the semaphore value was zero or less than zero, then the sem weight caused the caller to suspend execution, waiting for a subsequent post operation. When negative, the value of the semaphore equal to the number of waiting threads. Sempost is also an atomic function. It increments the value of the semaphore s by one. And if there are one or more threads waiting, then wake one of them. So it simply increments the value of the semaphore. This is how it works. Um, there are th four threads from T1 to T4. And um, the initial value of semaphore S is zero at time T0. And at time T1, thread one calls sem weight. Then semaphore value becomes minus one. Because the semaphore value becomes minus one, thread becomes sleep right after. And at time t2, the semaphore um, t2 thread 2 has called sem weight again. The value of the semaphore becomes minus 2. Because the value is negative, also thread, put, thread 2 is put to sleep. At time t3, thread 3 has called sem weight again. So the value of the semaphore becomes minus 3. Then becomes it because it's negative, it puts to sleep. At time t4, uh, thread t4 has called a sem post. It increases the value of the semaphore by one. So the value of the semaphore becomes minus two from minus three. Um, binary semaphore uh, is a semaphore that where the value of the semaphore can be either 0 or 1. So um, it is very important to initialize the value of the semaphore properly. Um, what if we'd like to use the semaphore as a lock? Then uh, if you look at the sample code, um, there is sem weight and there's sem post. If what um, what value uh, does the semaphore has to have as an initial value to be used as a semaphore as lock? The semaphore value has to be one for it to be used as a lock. It works as follows. So this is time. And this is the value of semaphore. And there are th one threads, thread zero. And there's another thread, thread one. So if the thread zero, uh, assume that the value of the semaphore was initialized to one. After calling sema weight, the value of the semaphore is decreased and becomes zero. Because semaphore weight uh, makes the value of the semaphore to zero, the semaphore weight can return immediately. 
and then it continues the thread the color can continue to work in and made into the enter the critical section and then right after executing the critical section the semaphore uh, the caller calls sem post and then it puts the value of the semaphore from 0 to 1 in the sem post returns so this is how the semaphore can be used as a lock uh, there are two threads there are thread 0 and thread one. And the value of the semaphore is initialized to one here. So um, the thread process. So it calls sem weight. And then it puts the value, uh, it sets the value of the semaphore from one to zero. And semaphore returns. And it enters a critical section. And assume that interrupt has occurred and the CPU is assigned to thread one. And then it goes here. And then thread one has called sem weight. At the moment, it decreases the value of the semaphore. And then the value of the semaphore has been changed from zero to minus one. And then because the value of the semaphore becomes negative, the caller has to put to sleep. And then because uh, the thread one is now put to sleep, the CPU is assigned to thread zero again. And then it runs and it runs critical section and eventually it's gonna call sem and the bar post that increases the value of the semaphore. The value of the semaphore has been changed to minus one to zero. Sorry for the noise. Uh, and then um, when it increases the semaphore, um, the semaphore routine checks whether there is any threads waiting for the semaphore value to become greater than zero or less greater than or equal to zero. And then after that moment, um, operating system wakes up the one of the waiting thread, in this case, thread one. So that thread, thread one becomes ready from the sleep state. And then the same post returns. And then uh, CPU is assigned to thread one again. Then thread one is put into ready queue and eventually gets CPU and the same weight returns. And then it can enter the critical section. So as you can see, we can use semaphore as a lock. Also, uh, we can use the semaphore as a condition variable. So we just show that semaphore can be used as lock. Now, um, we're gonna explain how we can use semaphore as a condition variable. Again, there is child threads that prints the string child. And then the parent function or the parent threads main, it creates a thread. And we would like to guarantee the print sequence as follows. So the parent prints the parent begin first, and then child thread prints the child string, and then parent thread prints the parent end again. So we would like to ensure the order of print statement. And uh, we have used the condition variable to achieve this, to guarantee the order of execution. But now we are going to use semaphore to ensure the order of execution as well. As you might guess, this solution is pretty simple. Right after creating the threads, we put semaphore wait. And within the child, um, we increases, we increase the value of the semaphore by one. Then to guarantee the order of execution, um, the key ingredient here is the initial value of the semaphore. Guess what you should, what should you set the value of the semaphore? Here, the value of the semaphore should be set to zero, then everything becomes in order.
let's review, let's examine the, the cases. Um, the initial value of the semaphore is zero. Um, assume that parent calls parent card semaphore wait before the child has called semaphore post. Then because the value of the semaphore is, is zero, um, the parents create a child and it calls semaphore wait and it decrements the semaphore value to minus one here. And because the value of the semaphore is less than zero, the parent is put to sleep. And then CPU is assigned to the child thread and the child starts to run. Uh, child prints the statement and it calls sem post. And then it increases the semaphore. So value of the semaphore is now changed from minus one to zero. Then after uh, it increases the semaphore value, it wake up the parent. And then semaphore post returns. And then CPU is switched back to the parent thread. And then semaphore wait returns. Oops, sorry. Returns. Okay, this is first scenario. The second scenario is the case where the child thread is executed first. So a uh, child runs and then uh, child runs before the parent calls sem wait. Let's consider this situation. At first, the child is created and then CP is switched from this parent to the child. And then child runs at equals sem post. That'll increase the value of the semaphore from zero to one. And then the child continue execution at, and after increasing the semaphore value, it checks whether if there is any waiting threads or not, but there is no currently no threads waiting. So it wakes up nobody and then post returns. And then the CPU is switched back to the parent threads and then parent threads start to run. So parents running, it calls semaphore wait but the current semaphore value is one. So the parent thread decreases the value of the semaphore from one to zero, and it continues execution without any problem. Okay. So in both cases, whether the parent executes first or the child executes first, um, the semaphore guarantees the order of the print statements. We're gonna uh, look at the producer consumer problem and we're gonna uh, use semaphore to ensure the critical section problem in bounded buffer problem. So there are put interface. Uh, in put interface, we wait for the buffer to become empty in order to put the data in it. Then a consumer, there is consumer interface and um, the consumer wait has to wait for the buffer to become filled before using it. So there is buffer. And then there is producer thread that puts the value to the buffer. And then there is consumer thread that reads the value from the buffer. And this function is put and this function is get. And there are many such buffers. So if you look at the code, the buffer is an array of array, not a single buffer. And then um, the fill denotes the position of the buffer where the producer can put the value. And use is the position of the buffer where the consumer can the data block read from. So there are two important variables fill and use. This is the the initial solution for the producer and consumer. Um, the producer it iterates a for loop for a number of times defined by the loop and it waits for the buffer to be empty and it puts the value in it then 
it posts to semaphore that the data block is available at the buffer. Consumer works in the opposite way. It, it works as long as there is a buffer to consume. So it waits for uh, some data available in the buffer. It, if it becomes available, then it reads the data blocks from the buffer and then sends a post saying that a buffer slot is now becomes empty. And then after reading the data block or read the contents, it prints the contents. Okay, so this is skeleton structure, skeleton structure of producer and consumer code. Of course, there's lots of problems in it. So um, initially, uh, at the very beginning, all the buffers are empty, and um, the buffers are all empty, so the semaphore empty is set to max because all buffers are empty. And the semaphore full is set to zero. Semaphore full is set to zero because none of the buffers has none of the buffers has legitimate content. However, uh, there is a race condition. What if there are multiple producers? Let's consider there are two producer, producer one and producer two. And assume that buffers are, are empty. So um, I missed the uh, P1 cross semaphore weight and empty. And because there are sufficient number of buffers available, uh, you can pass it. And then at that moment, right after calling semaphore empty, the control is switched to the second producer two, P2. And then it calls semaphore weight. Sorry, this is empty. And it finds that uh, it finds that there is sufficient amount of buffers empty to produce some value. So it returns. And then producer two calls put function. And inside of fu put function, there is a line and that puts the value to the buffer pointed by the variable fill. This is very important. Okay. The variable fill is an index that points to the buffer the producer has to point has producer has to create the contents too. Okay. So this is fill and then right after uh, setting the value to the fill assume that CPU has now back to CPU is assigned to the producer one again. Then the control is transferred to the producer one. Now producer one cores put i. And then inside the put i, it will execute the same statement buffer and it saves the value of some value to the buffer pointed by fill. And because these two threads share the same fill, and now fill uh, value of P1 and the fill value of the P2, they are the same. So P1 overrides the buffer, uh, which, con which contains the contents created by P2. So there is a race condition. This is not good. Okay. So why is this happening? This is because the value fill, the, in the value fill is shared by P1 and P2, and it is not protected by the mutual exclusion. 
or some type of mutex or lux. So we have to uh, put, uh, we have to protect the put a producer and consumer uh, properly with the mutex. So our first solution, this is incomplete solution, is put a mutex protect the, protect this section of code with the mutex. Okay, so before executing the statement, we wait for the mutex to be available. And right after finishing executing the critical section, we make the mutex available. But this is incorrect. Okay. Of course, for the consumer, we did the, we did the same thing. We there is critical section, and then we put a uh, mutex at the beginning of the critical section and at the end of the critical section to lock and unlock the code. Of course, this is incorrect. Why is this incorrect? Consider the following scenario. Let's say that um, there is one producer and one consumer, and the mutex is initially one, and there is uh, all. Okay, um, so this is zero. I was wrong. Sorry about that. I will I'll make a correction on the actual lecture note. Um, when producer starts, it first checks the mutex. The mutex is currently available, so it decreases the value of the mutex from 1 to 0, and then goes to the next statement, and it calls semaphore wait empty, waiting for the empty spots. But there is no empty spots here. So the producer goes into sleep. And then switch uh, CPU is assigned to the consumer one, and consumer one calls semaphore wait. But because currently semaphore wait is minus zero, the value of the semaphore wait mutex becomes minus one. Though, so the consumer becomes sleep goes into the sleep state again. So this is deadlock. The reason this is happening is because producer has go into sleep within the critical section and with holding the lock mutex. So that should not happen. So correct solution is put the lock just before going and accessing the critical section. So we first wait for the empty condition and then put the lock inside the critical section right here. And then the problem can be solved now. So this is working solution. So I'm not going to get into details of the solution. It's just pretty straightforward. For the consumer, of course, we have put the mutex inside the full and empty semaphore, like this. Now we're going to explain the concept of reader writer locks. So far, um, for us, if a certain object is locked, then no other thread can access the object. But if somebody wants to read an object, then when um, it locks the object, it may allow the other threads to read that object so that a number of uh, threads can read the same object at the same time that will greatly enhance the performance of the system. So um, uh, for imagine a number of concurrent list operations, including insert and lookups. For insert, uh, traditional critical section makes sense. However, for scan, it simply read the data structure. So uh, as long as we can guarantee that no insert is ongoing, we can allow many lookups to be processed concurrently. For this objective, um, they have developed a special type of lock known as read aloud lock. 
So read or write lock has three fields. First one, most important part is reader count. It denotes a number of readers that accesses an object. And then there is a lock because read, reader count is going to be shared by uh, a number of threads. That threat, uh, reader, reader counter has to be protected by the locks. So it has a lock field. And also there is a write lock. This is an exclusive lock. So it can do three fields. So this is the rule of the reader write lock. Only a single writer can acquire the lock. Once a reader has acquired a read lock, uh, more readers will be allowed to acquire the read lock too. But a writer has to wait until all readers are finished. That's the rule. So um, when an object is uh, a object is read by a thread, then uh, more threads can access the object with read as a reader, but a writer is not allowed to modify the object. So as I as we examined, there are three fields. There is reader counter, and there is lock to protect the reader counter, and there is write lock. And for every lock source in my force for anything, uh, initialization module is very important. So um, for reader line or lock initialization, it has to initialize the readers, and it has to initialize the read lock, uh, initialize the lock, and also it has to initialize the write lock. Okay, so this is the code. I'm going to explain in detail in more easier manner, but um, this is the code for read lock. So uh, all the code are protected by the lock, beginning uh, of the critical section and end of the critical section. It is protected by the lock so that no two threads can execute this critical section. This is the same for the read lock, uh, acquire read lock, and then same for the release read lock. So it first acquire the lock, run the code for the read lock, and release the lock. Let's get into the details. First, it acquires the lock, and this is read lock, and it wants to acquire the read lock. So it acquires the lock, and then increase the number of readers by one. And if this is the first reader to access the object, then it acquires the write lock so that no write threads can access it. And after acquiring the write lock, it releases the lock. For release function, um, the in releasing the read lock, uh, it first ex executes sem underbar weight, and then it decreases the number of readers. If the caller is the last reader to leaving the system, then it posts the write lock so that uh, the writers can now modify the object. And then it posts the lock. Um, the write lock is the same. It's a simple lock. It waits for the write lock, and then releasing the write lock corresponds to post posting a write lock. Let's consider the scenario. There are two readers and one writers. Thread one and thread two is reader, and thread three is writer. Thread one first acquires the lock and increases the read count. So <coughs> after uh, after acquire the lock, the value of the semaphore lock becomes zero. Then read count increases to one. And then because it's the first reader, it also decreases the value of the semaphore write lock to zero. And then it it releases the lock, so increases the semaphore lock to one. Now the thread one can happily do whatever it wants to do right after entering the critical section. 
as a reader. Thread 2 do the similar thing. Uh, in thread 2, it acquires the lock and then it increases the read count by 1. So read count has changed from 1 to 2. And it unlocks the semaphore lock. Then um, the thread 3 is a writer. So it attempts to acquire the write lock. And then in the code for acquiring the write lock, it waits for the semaphore write lock. Okay. The value of the semaphore write lock is currently zero. So as a result of calling wait, the value of the semaphore write lock becomes minus one and the writer goes into sleep. So there is only readers in the in this preset section. Here, what if there comes new reader? Then the new reader checks the lock semaphore and increases the read count and then decreases the lock semaphore again. So while the ride, there is a writer thread waiting for the critical sections to become available, the incoming reader can process it and can access the critical section. So there is a fairness problem. So it is easy for the reader to starve the writer. So for 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 avoiding this situation with some extra mechanism to say to prohibit this to happen. Let us explain the problem of dining philosophers. Assume there are five philosophers sitting on the table. Between each pair of philosophers is a single fork. Uh, each of philosophers have times where they think and don't need any fork and then times where they eat so the philosophers repeats between thinking and eating and in order to eat the philosopher needs to needs two forks both the one on the left hand and the one on the right hand and so uh, there is a contention for these forks for example from the philosopher one and the philosopher two they share the fork too. It's something like that. So um, the key challenge in designing in dining and solving the dining philosopher problem is that there is no deadlock. First one. And the second one, no philosopher starves and never gets to eat. Third one, and they make the concurrency high. So um, these are the behavior. This is the behavior of the philosopher. He thinks, get forks, eat, and put forks. So each th philosopher is a thread and they execute while statement. And there is helper function. Uh, this is called by a philosopher and if it calls left at of the philosopher P, then it returns P. And it calls a right of philosopher P, then it returns P plus one modular five. So um, philosopher P wishes to refer to the fork on the left and they call left. If the philosopher P wishes to refer to the fork on their right, and then they call right P. So um, we can represent a fork as a semaphore. So there are five semaphores, and we need some semaphore, one for each fork. So we define the array of semaphore of five forks. And then get fork is a behavior of getting the left fork and getting the right fork. 
And after eating, the philosopher put down the fork. So it is a process of uh, posting the left fork and the right fork. So then each philosopher will call get fork and foot fork. But this code is subject to deadlock. So this is broken because this code is subject to deadlock. That's because what if all the philosophers call get forks at the same time and each fork, uh, each philosopher calls same weight of the left. Then every philosopher will pick up his left fork and then no fork will be left. So everybody is waiting for their right forks to be available, but um, that's gonna be not that's that's not gonna be available soon, or well, that's not gonna be available forever. So, as a solution to this deadlock problem, um, we slightly change the order the philosopher acquires a fork. Designate one philosopher, for example, philosopher four. And um, for philosopher four, it designates philosopher four to acquire the forks in different order. So rest of the philosophers, they pick up a left fork first. But for philosopher number four, they pick up the right fork first. So um, if we adopt this kind of protocol, then we can break the circular order condition. So a cycle of waiting can be broken. And um, we can implement semaphore using a condition variable. So we have we have shown that using semaphore we can implement lock. Also, we also have shown that we can implement we can implement condition variable using the semaphore. Now, we are showing that using condition variable, we can implement semaphore, which means that semaphore in condition variable is equivalent theoretically. So um, we define semaphore using the condition variable. This is typical condition variable. There is value and there is condition variable. And there's mutex. And <coughs> for initialization, it says the value and then it's a cond in it and mutex in it. So it initializes condition variable. It also initializes a lock. So this is initializing function for the semaphore that has been implemented using the condition variable. And semaphore weight is, uh, first it has to, first you have to recognize that uh, this code is protected by the mutex. So you when you start, you call mutex, and then you unlock the mutex at the end. And uh, when the value is less than or equal to zero, then the zim weight calls conditional weight. So it has to wait. And when it gets out of the condition weight, then it decreases the value by one. Similarly, uh, for the post operation, we protect the code with mutex. At the beginning, lock the mutex, and at the end, unlock the mutex. And post means that when uh, post is called, it increases the counter value by one. And then uh, in the original semaphore, we have to wake up one of the thread. So if there's any, anybody waiting, so we have to call cond on the bus signal. Um, this is the characteristics of semaphore. Uh, semaphore does not maintain the invariant that value of the semaphore. 
and value the interesting thing is the value never been lower than zero so this gave you easier to implement and matches the current linux implementation so we have shown that using the semaphore we can in implement condition variable and also we have shown that using condition variable we can implement semaphore so as a result semaphore and condition variable is equivalent so using semaphore you can do whatever the condition variable can do and using the condition variable you can do whatever the semaphore can do